December 15th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Paige Plinsky with the latest social news, including an update on the arrested Darien football players, an officer-involved shooting in New Britain, and much more. Kevin Coleman in for Frank Granito today with your forecast and a Nutmeg Sports update. And later on, Donald Lang joins us to take a look back on this day in history. But first, state police are investigating a New Britain officer-involved shooting that left one carjacking suspect dead. Now, on Thursday around 6.45 p.m., New Britain police officers attempted to stop a car in the area of Chapman Street in New Britain. Well, the vehicle was believed to have been involved in a series of armed carjackings in the area and surrounding towns over the last two weeks. The most recent incidents occurred in New Britain on Monday, where shots were fired at one victim and in a second incident where the victim was pistol whipped. Well, last night, as New Britain police officers attempted to stop that car and apprehend the occupants, more than one New Britain police officer discharged their firearm. Three suspects in the vehicle were hit by gunfire and one died. The other two are expected to recover. No New Britain police officers were injured in that incident. There was at least one firearm in the possession of the suspects, and state police are now investigating that incident. In other news, MTA spokesperson Nancy Gamerman said Thursday that the MTA Police Department is investigating a December 5th West Reading train crash as a possible DUI. Now, that incident took place on Tuesday, December 5th, after 9 p.m., when a train struck a vehicle at Topstone Crossing near the West Reading station. While the driver of the car was taken to Danbury Hospital at the time, none of the 30 people on board that Danbury branch train were injured. The train had departed South Norwalk at 8.06 p.m. And Darien quarterback Jack Joyce appeared at State Superior Court in Norwalk on Thursday morning to face charges stemming from an incident on November 6. Now Joyce is one of three Darien teens who was arrested for the incident at a house in New Canaan involving a New Canaan teen on November 22. Now Joyce was charged with disorderly conduct and interfering with police, and he was freed after posting a $500 bond. Brian Minicus, one of the Darien football captains, was charged with unlawful restraint and third-degree assault, and he's already appeared in court and applied for accelerated rehabilitation. Now, the third teen, an unnamed minor, was charged with conspiracy to commit third-degree assault and unlawful restraint. Due to conf confidentiality, it is unclear of his court status. Well, Joyce was joined by his attorney, John Thigerson, and upon being called, Thigerson initially objected to a motion to have the proceedings videotaped and photographed, saying that given all the publicity the case has already received, a potential jury pool could be tainted. However, the motion to photograph was upheld and and all was recorded. While accelerated rehabilitation was requested for Joyce, AR is a program that would give Joyce some combination of probation, community service, and or counseling, and the charges would be dropped in the future. There's a lot more on that story at DarianTimes.com. And the Connecticut Post reports that outgoing Stratford Councilwoman Tina Manis is taking some heat for a Facebook post. She allegedly wrote on her Facebook, the State House hooker is here, oh goody. Now she is a Democrat and she wrote that while sitting on the stage of Stratford High School Monday evening. Monday's largely ceremonial session was the final meeting of the outgoing town council members and the first meeting of its newly elected members, as well as the new swearing in for Mayor Laura Hoydick. Well, the posting drew some disdain from all corners of the political scene in town. Outgoing town council chairman Beth DuPont was one who criticized Manis, saying in part, her remarks seemed to be directed toward minority leader in the State House of Representatives, Themis Claritus, who came to Stratford to participate in the mayor's inauguration. She went on to say her cyberbullying and inappropriate name-calling is an embarrassment, not only in town, but to all Democrats. But Manis, in a lengthy text message to Hearst Connecticut Media, insisted that the Facebook posting was directed at herself and not at Claritus or Hoydick. And in other news, the attorney for Reading Police Chief Doug Fuchs, who was put on administrative leave of absence pending the outcome of an investigation, is demanding that First Selectman Julia Pemberton stop discussing his client's employment status in public. In a letter obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, Stuart Katz, who represents Fuchs, wrote that he is concerned over the great distress that his client is experiencing in regard to the way Pemberton handled issues relating to his employment. Katz is therefore insisting that Pemberton immediately refer 
refrain from discussing Fuchs' employment status in any public forum. Now, the issues to which Katz is referring pertain to multiple complaints against Fuchs filed over the past year by Reading Fire and EMS Company, a civilian named Sebastian Martinez, the Reading Police Union, and others. Now, in addition, on May 16th, a civilian complaint was filed by Sean Morris that is related to events that happened on April 11, 2016, when Reading resident Peter Valenti was found hanging by a noose in a shed outside his Blueberry Hill Road home. Valenti's body was initially mistaken for a dummy by the first police officer who found it. Then then, according to the complaint, Fuchs refused to allow emergency medical technician to check on Valenti, saying that he was already dead. However, Valenti's family has filed suit, saying he was in fact alive and could have been saved. There's more on that story at thereadingpilot.com. And Stratford residents upset with the Stratford Board of Education's plan to lay off more than 40 teachers have created a petition asking district officials to reconsider their decision. The petition created on change.org by Patricia Clark, Sperling and others indicates dissatisfaction with Superintendent Janet Robinson and Chief Operating Officer Clarence Zachary. Robinson announced on Tuesday her plan to lay off teachers in the second semester of the 2017-18 school year. The petition reads in part, this letter is an expression of our vote of no confidence in Dr. Robinson and Mr. Zachary and their ability to properly run our school district in the best interests of our children. They went on to say we understand the severity of this decision and did not arrive at it hastily. The petition calls for no layoffs to take place and for the Board of Education to go forward with a forensic audit to examine the district's finances. More on that story at StraffordStar.com. And in some lighter news, HN's New Canaan Advertiser has been reporting for a while about some parking issues in town, and editor Greg Riley captured quite the unique parking job near the train station recently. Take a look. This car was found driverless and stuck with its front wheels off of the ground early Tuesday evening behind the First County Bank on Park Street in a lot adjacent to the train tracks. Now, perhaps it belonged to a commuter who was in a hurry or available spaces were in short supply. We're just not sure. All right, well, taking a turn now, going to throw it over to Kevin Coleman for a look at your forecast. Kevin. Thank you, Kane. Just when you thought we didn't have enough snow, we got some more snow coming into the forecast this afternoon. Cloudy with some snow showers developing throughout the afternoon. One to three inches are expected, so please take that in mind when you're taking your commute home this Friday evening. A high of 29 today. We look towards tonight. Cloudy early, becoming mostly clear after midnight. A low of 24 tonight. Now tomorrow, Saturday, sunny with some partly cloudy skies throughout the afternoon, a high of 35. And on Sunday, we wrap up the weekend with partly cloudy skies and a high of 33. That'll do it for your weather update. Kate, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Kevin. We're gonna step out for a break. When we come back, Donald Dang will take a look back on this day in history. Kevin has your Nutmeg Sports update and we have more local news after this. New Cannon Foreign Car, yes, New Cannon Foreign Car has been servicing all makes of foreign cars for over 50 years. We also buy, sell, and consign cars too. We can help you with all your automotive needs from service to sales. Call us at 203-966-2681. At Portofino Restaurant and Wine Bar in Bethel, fresh and simple food is our concept. Owned and operated by brothers Rocco and Louie, Portofino has a distinct and diverse food and drink menu. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Come join us for live local music on Tuesdays and Sundays, Wednesday nights for mouthwatering prime rib, and every Thursday night is ladies night. Planning a party? All our catering menus are personalized to suit your event and your budget. Join us at the Dolan Plaza, 213 Greenwood Ave Bethel, and call us at 203-797-8131. Like us on Facebook.
Welcome back to this December 15th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. Time to throw it over to Donald Eng to get a look back on this date in history. Don. Well, Kate, it's a pretty big day in U.S. constitutional history. Uh, starting in 1791 on this date, Virginia becomes the last state to ratify the Bill of Rights, making the first ten amendments of the Constitution the law and completing the reforms begun by the Declaration of Independence um, before the Massachusetts Ratifying Convention would accept the Constitution, which they finally did in 1788, the Constitution's Federalist supporters promised to create a Bill of Rights to amend the Constitution immediately upon creating a new government, and they actually followed through with that promise, so that's, uh, that was a good thing there. Next we go to 1890. Uh, Sioux Chief and Holy Man Sitting Bull, killed by Indian police at the Standing Rock Reservation in South Dakota. Now, after the Battle of the Little Bighorn, Sitting Bull had led his people into Canada for four years before hunger forced them to surrender back in the United States. Uh, he retained much of his influence, though, and when Indian police tried to arrest him, his warriors resisted. Sitting Bull, 11 others were killed. His death effectively ended the Indian Wars on the Great Plains. 1961 now, uh, Adolf Eichmann, the uh, SS officer who had organized, essentially, the uh, Adolf Hitler's final solution, is condemned to death by an Israeli war crimes tribunal. Now, Eichmann had escaped the Nuremberg proceedings and was living in Argentina when Mossad agents grabbed him off the street and smuggled him out of the country, posing him as uh, an Israeli airlines uh, attendant who had been injured. His defense for overseeing the murder of an estimated six million people? Just following orders. Finally, now we go to 1933, a big day for, uh, for American society. Look at this. All along, that when this matter was properly submitted to the rank and file of our people, they would readily see that it had no place in our Constitution. It would be very difficult, if not impossible, to estimate the benefit that will come to this country from the lesson taught to the coming generations to make it their business to see that no such matter as this is ever again made the subject of federal constitutional law. Yeah, that was New York Governor Al Smith talking about the 21st Amendment to the Constitution that became effective on this date in 1933. The 21st Amendment repealed the 18th Amendment, which was prohibition. The amendment, though, did not ban states from enacting their own liquor controls, which is why having a beer was illegal in Mississippi until 1966, and you couldn't have a drink in a restaurant or a bar or anything like that in Kansas until 1987. Believe it or not, Kansas state police routinely raided interstate Amtrak trains because they have bar cars. Locally, Bridgewater, Connecticut, the last dry town in the state, legalizing the sale and consumption of alcohol in 2014. That is your look back in history for today, December 15th, and I'm Donald Ng. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, in other local news, the Milford Police Department is investigating several auto thefts and car break-ins in Milford and are looking for help identifying the suspects. Now, security video images were captured when the suspects used stolen credit cards taken from a car in Milford. The cards were used at Champ Sports at the Connecticut Post Mall and at a Gulf gas station in New Haven. Now, police said the suspects were using a small gray four-door sedan with a sunroof when they used that stolen credit card at a New Haven McDonald's at about 2.30 a.m. December 8th. Anyone with information on the identity of the suspects is asked to contact detectives at 203-783-4765. And health, a school, a health and school officials in Woodbridge are warning students and staff at Amity Regional High School that they may have been exposed to the mumps. Now, WTNH reports that the superintendent of schools sent out a letter to Amity parents and staff on Thursday informing them that, according to the health department, there may have been exposure to a case of the mumps during the week of December 4th. Now, mumps is an acute viral disease that is transmitted through direct contact with respiratory droplets spread by coughing, sneezing, or through saliva. The disease can, however, be prevented by immunization. Symptoms of the mumps are usually headache, body aches, fever, and swollen and tender glands in the jaw. And in other news in Ridgefield, a horse ordinance extending town regulation of horses and a variety of other hooved animals, including ponies, pigs, goats, cattle, donkeys, and more, even camels, was approved by the town meeting that nearly filled the 160-seat capacity of the library's program room on Wednesday night. Now, the motion was approved on a standing vote that meeting moderator Ed Tyrell judged to be two to one in favor of the regulation. 
Well, the ordinance to regulate the keeping of livestock on small lots in high-density residential areas governs many aspects of keeping horses and other livestock, including fencing, storage, sanitation, and run-in sheds. Well, the new regulation applies only to lots of less than half an acre in size, and First Selectman Rudy Marconi noted Wednesday night contains a grandfather clause exempting properties that have livestock now. Well, much of the evening's debate concerned whether smaller animals other than horses, like goats, little pet pigs, and the like, should be exempted. But Tyrell said an amendment to limit the ordinance to horses was too great a change from how the meeting had been advertised. There's a lot more on that story at theridgefieldpress.com. And Rabbi Levi Stone of the Sheenerson Center came to Wilton December 13th to light the menorah on the town green to celebrate Hanukkah. Now taking part were first selectman Lynn Vanderslice, State Representative Gail Laviel, and members of the Wilton community who sang, danced, and celebrated despite freezing temperatures. Well, tonight is the fourth night of the Festival of Lights, and we at HIN, of course, wish all those who celebrate a happy Hanukkah. And great photos there by Brian Hayfully. All right, we're going to throw it back over to Kevin Coleman for your Nutmeg Sports Update. Kevin. Thank you, Kay. Again, we want to congratulate the Darien Blue Wave and the St. Joseph Cadets on representing the FCAC and taking home state championships in football this year in Class L and Class S. So congrats to Darien and St. Joe's. But as we say goodbye to the fall season, we say hello to the winter season. Tonight we kick off with some girls basketball. Let's take a look at the slate of games. At 5.30 we kick things off as the Ridgefield Tigers travel to West Hill to take on the Vikings. The Ludlow Falcons will travel to Norwalk to take on the Bears. Brian McMahon travels to War to take on the Mustangs at 5.30. Trumbull will travel to Bridgeport Central. New Canaan will be at Staples at 7 p.m. Darien will take on St. Joe's at 7 p.m. And the biggest game tonight is Stanford at Wilton. Two teams who expect to finish in the top three this year in girls basketball. And finally, girls hockey as well will kick off tonight with, with two FCAC games. Stanford will take on Richfield at 345. And Wilton will be at Trumbull at 5. 30. That will do it for your Nutmeg Sports Update. Kate, back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. We're going to step out for a break. When we come back, we're going to recap some of the top stories we're following after this. We know it's your busy season, and that's why Walter Stewart's Market is here to make things easy by offering the best of autumn under one roof. Walter Stewart's Market is your local one-stop fall shop. There are so many seasonal flavors to savor, and Stewart's has them all. From Blue Jay Orchard's local cider donuts to Vermont Farmstead cheddar and all of your favorite varieties of local apples and pears. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, and find us at stewartsmarket.com. We Want a new experience in car buying? No aggravation, no confrontation, just answers to all your questions. Scap Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Car buying the way you want it to be. With one of the largest selections of new two- and four-door Jeep Wranglers available, we are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Located in Fairfield, Connecticut, we're easy to get to. Just two and a half miles off the Merritt Parkway, exit 44 via Route 58 South. Save thousands right now at the Black Friday sales event. Ends November 30th. At Black Horse Garage, we fulfill all your sports car needs. We specialize in manufacturer-recommended service and aftermarket high-performance parts and installation. We have one of the nation's top storage facilities and offer a high-end collision department that understands your need for detail. Visit BlackHorseGarage.com for more. The Kitchen Center offers quality cabinetry and affordable pricing. Visit our showroom for a free consultation with our professional design staff. For all your other home improvement needs, visit Northeast Building Supply, our full-service lumber yard and window showroom. The Kitchen Center, a division of Northeast Building Supply, 1470 Barnum Avenue, Bridgeport. Dr. Stephen Molinaro and Peter Healy of Family Practice Dentistry and Laser Dental Care have served Richfield for over 22 years. Experienced staff offer gentle drillless techniques, preventative care, and cosmetic procedures in a relaxed environment. Grateful for the community's trust and support through the years, new patients and their families are welcome. Call today.
Welcome back to this Friday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinsky recapping some of the top stories we're following today. State police are investigating a new Britain officer-involved shooting that left one carjacking suspect dead. On Thursday around 6.45 p.m., New Britain police officers attempted to stop a vehicle in the area of Chapman Street. Now, the vehicle was believed to have been involved in a series of armed carjackings in the area and surrounding towns over the last two weeks. The most recent incidents had occurred in New Britain on Monday, where shots were fired at one victim and in a second incident the victim was pistol whipped. Well last night as New Britain police officers attempted to stop the car and apprehend those occupants more than one police officer discharged their firearm. Three suspects in the vehicle were hit by the gunfire and one died. The other two are expected to recover. No New Britain police officers were injured. Now there was at least one firearm in possession of the suspects at the time. State police are now investigating that incident. And MTA spokesperson Nancy Gamerman said Thursday that the MTA Police Department are investigating a West Reading train station crash as a possible DUI. Now that incident took place on Tuesday, December 5th, around 9.10 p.m. when a train struck a vehicle at Topstone Crossing near the West Reading station. While the driver of the car was taken to Danbury Hospital at the time, none of the 30 people on board the Danbury branch train were injured. The train had departed from South Norwalk at 8.06 p.m. Yeah. And in other news, Darianne quarterback Jack Joyce appeared at State Superior Court in Norwalk Thursday morning to face charges stemming from an incident on November 6th. Now, Joyce is one of three teens who were arrested for the incident that happened at a house in New Canaan involving a New Canaan teen. Joyce was charged with disorderly conduct and interfering with a police officer. Brian Minicus, one of the Darianne football team captains, was charged with unlawful restraint and third-degree assault. And he's already appeared in court and has applied for accelerated rehabilitation. Well, the third team an unnamed minor was charged with conspiracy to commit third-degree assault and unlawful restraint, but due to confidentiality, his court status is unclear. Well, Joyce was joined by his attorney, John Thigerson, and upon being called, Thigerson initially objected to a motion to have the proceedings videotaped and photographed, saying that given all the publicity that the case has already received, a potential jury pool could be tainted. However, the motion to photograph was upheld and all was recorded. Accelerated rehab was requested for Joyce. Now, A is a program that would give Joyce some combination of probation, community service, and or counseling, and then the charges would be dropped in the future. There's more on that story at DarianTimes.com. And the Connecticut Post reports that outgoing Stratford Councilwoman Tina Manis is taking some heat for a Facebook post. She reportedly posted on her Facebook, the State House hooker is here, oh goody. Now Manis, a Democrat, posted that while sitting on the stage of Stratford High School Monday evening. Monday's largely ceremonial session was the final meeting of outgoing town council members and the first meeting of its newly elected members, as well as a swearing in of Mayor Laura Hoydick. Now, the posting drew disdain from all corners of the political scene in town. Outgoing council chairman Beth DuPont was one who criticized Manis, saying in part her remarks seemed to be directed toward minority leader of the State House of Representatives, Themis Claritus, who came to Stratford to participate in the mayor's inauguration. Now, she went on to say her cyberbullying and inappropriate name-calling is an embarrassment not only to the town, but to all Democrats. However, Manis, in a lengthy text message to Hearst, Connecticut Media, has insisted that the Facebook posting was directed at herself self and not at Claritus or Hoydick. All right, taking a turn now, going to get one final look at your forecast with Kevin Coleman. Kevin. Thank you, Kate. Cloudy today, but we have some snow showers in the mix this afternoon, which could cause some some trouble here on your commute home tonight. One to three inches are expected, a high of 29. And tonight, things won't get clear until around midnight. There'll be a low of 24. Tomorrow, sunny despite a few afternoon clouds, a high of 35. And Sunday, we wrap up the weekend with partly cloudy skies and a high of 33. That'll do it for your weather update. Kate, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Kevin. We are going to wrap things up here on your coffee break. Wishing everyone a great weekend, and we'll see you Monday at 11 with the latest local news and more. Enjoy.